Hello everyone, I'm Said Mandegar. Welcome back to the second episode of 3ds Max 2022 Basics. In this video, I'm gonna explain you how to navigate around your 3ds Max to work easier and more efficient. Okay, as you see, each viewport is showing the teapot from different angle. This format is the most common way to set up the viewport. I mean perspective at the bottom right, front view at the top right, top view at the top left, and left and right view at the bottom left. And if you notice, the perspective one is showing as a simple shaded model, while the rest are showing as wireframe. I will explain how to change or switch between them in the next minutes. A golden frame shows you the active viewport so you would know in which viewport you are working. You can also switch between them by pressing on this plus sign, active viewport and select each one you like. To maximize each viewport, press on maximize viewport toggle or simply press alt plus w on your keyboard. Press that icon again or the shortcut to minimize the viewport. If you want to move around a specific object, first select it and then press orbit subobject. And by holding your click and moving your mouse, you can see the other sides. Note that you're just moving the viewport camera, not the object. You can also hold alt and scroll click to orbit. And press the scroll click to activate hand tool as well. And in case you wanted to zoom in or out, press the zoom button, click and drag up to zoom in and drag down while you hold that click to zoom out. And whenever you are so far away or too close to that object, simply press Z on the keyboard to get back to a suitable distance from that object. Field of view actually changes the viewport lens. Click and drag up to make a wider view and drag down to get a close up view. I recommend you use zoom for seeing more stuff on the fly. Field of view is mostly used for setting up the final camera composition. If you want to learn more about it, click on the interactive card I put up in here. Sometimes you mess with your scene and you end up with such a view and it takes a long time to get back. What I recommend is hover your cursor over this compass and click on the house icon to fix the view. As simple as that. Speaking of compass, I should say it includes different views like top, right, left, front, back and even different angles. So it'd be a great help if you want to get an exact view. To get rid of this grid, go to the plus button and press on show grids to hide it. You can also press G on your keyboard to enable or disable this item. Alright, now I'm gonna talk about the way that the viewport is showing the objects. Here's a list of different modes you can go through and check them, but some of them are essential to know, so let's talk about them. First, I would like to mention clay mode. This mode is taken from ZBrush app and I guess it has been included in 3ds Max since 2016. It shows the modeling details very well. But I don't recommend you use it in heavy scenes cause it eats up a lot of RAM space. The other important mode is wireframe. It's a lightweight view mode that actually gives you some cool access like choosing objects that are behind the front objects so you can select them in default shading view mode. The shortcut for this mode is F3. Let me show you an example. Here I hide an object behind my main one. So basically, I cannot select it in this view mode, right? So what I'm gonna do in such a cases is to change the mode from default shading to wireframe to select the object. Then I can apply any changes I want. Now I'm gonna talk about the selection mode. 
Basically, when you move your cursor on an object that is not selected, viewport shows a yellow line around that object to show you which object your cursor is on. By clicking on this object, that yellow line turns to blue and it's ready to apply some changes on it. And if you click on the empty environment, that object will be deselected. Here are some options to customize the selection view mode. Edged faces. It turns on the wireframes on shading mode to show you the segments of that object. And once you click on any object, it focuses more on the segments to be distinguishable from the other objects. You can enable or disable that by pressing F4 on your keyboard. In Display Selected, there are two options. Let me copy this object to show you better. If you enable Display Selected with Edged Face, it's the same as previous item I could enable by pressing F4, but this time it just applies on the selected objects, not on all scenes objects. As you see, now the selected object is showing the segments while the unselected one stayed the same. If you use shade selected face, it covers the selected object with a transparent blue color just to make some difference between the selected and unselected objects. If you compare these two objects, you will find out. Now let's talk about the viewport background. There are three different options to control the background. First is the gradient mode which is the default mode. It starts from a darker gray color to a brighter one. The next one is solid color. Hmm, I never use that, you can choose it if you want. Next is the environment background. As you see, it's black, cause it has to be modified through environments and effect tab. You can bring it up by pressing 8 on your keyboard. Once it's loaded, you can assign any color or map like sun or HDRI map to it. Let me show you. Here you can change that color. And here you can assign any HDRI map you want. There is actually another option that allows you to modify your viewport background much better. Not only HDR files, you can insert any kind of images. One of the great advantage of inserting an image in viewport background is to do perspective match for your exterior scenes. I will show you in the next episode. Apply to active view insert this image just in this viewport, but apply to all views in active layout tab with insert it in all viewports. This is the perspective match item that I'm gonna explain later. Let me change the main viewport to HDR and the rest to default mode as well. The next topic that I'm gonna talk about is the viewport lighting system. Here we have some options for changing the viewport's general quality. 
High quality is the closest mode to the final render, but it eats up a lot of RAM space. Also, controlling the viewport's quality is related to two items, lighting and shadows, and materials. Let's dig into them. Lighting and shadows have two choices. The first one is illuminate with default light that is always selected as default. And the second one is illuminate with scene light. There are some more which I'll discuss about it in another chapter. In material item, there are four main options divided into shaded and realistic modes. Shaded materials without map just shows the object's color. Shaded material with map shows the assigned material on objects. Realistic material without map reflect the HDR light on the object color and realistic material with map shows the light's correct behavior according to the texture. Now you see that the teapot is reflecting the default light. The reason that it shows no texture is that I didn't assign any texture. Now I'm gonna change from default light to scene light to see the HDR lights on my object. And for those who would like to increase the realistic preview quality in viewport, you can go to the viewport configuration, drag this arrow from left to right. I'm not sure if you see the differences, but in finalized scene, you will definitely see. Okay, I'll go back to basic viewport setup mode to navigate easier. Here you see different 2D and 3D views like perspective, orthographic, top view, left and so on. The main difference between perspective and orthographic are, in perspective view, objects which are far away are smaller than those nearby. In the orthographic view, all objects appear at the same scale. Perspective viewpoints give more information about depths and are often easier to view because you see perspective views in real life. Also, if you choose orthographic view, you can't go through the objects, while the perspective has no limit in that issue. The next option I'm gonna introduce you is the safe frame. In this render shot, you will notice that the render output is a square while your viewport ratio is a rectangle, right? So the render output size and ratio is not what you are seeing through your viewport. You need to active this or press Shift plus F to enable and do it again to disable that. This is final frame ratio. To change that, you need to go to render setup, in common tab, change the size. You need to disable the lock icon in order to change the ratio or enable it to fix that ratio. Alright, the last option I want to introduce you for this episode is the viewport layout. You can simply click and hold the interaction point and drag it wherever you want. or press on the plus icon and open the viewport configuration menu. Under the layout tab, you can see there are a few common layouts you can choose. And if you click on them, you can change the view to create the best workflow. So in this episode, we learn how to navigate around an object, 
how to master different types of previews and how to change the viewport modes, lighting and shadows, changing backgrounds, so on and so forth. That's it for me guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button if it was helpful and subscribe to my channel and click on that bell to be notified about the next video. See you in the next episode. Have fun!